There you go. That's the way to start wow. a show. I feel That's like I need a amazing. cape. <laughs> we all need capes, actually. We should all start the show flying in with capes next week. How are you guys doing? It's Greg Oliar and LB here on the after show. Nice to see everybody. Thank you for joining us. I can't believe I feel better after all... that stirring intro music. Wow. Yes. Stuff, right? Isn't it great? Woo! I actually want to play it again, but I'll do it later on because it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Matthew Falsa, I want to say. Fasa. FTW. Yeah. He, fantastic. Oh, is that Matt? Oh. Yeah. And he is so talented. And um, by the way, does personal ringtones for people. If people want to you know, get your own personal ringtone, Matt will do that for you later on. Yeah. We'll explain that how later. But uh, what a nice opening. I asked him for something stirring and hopeful. And out came something that sounds a little like the Star Trek theme, but also like the Lone Ranger. And I don't know. I like the whole thing. It's fun. It's fun to listen to. We've had a big week in the world of news and two weeks since I've seen you last. Yeah, it's what, a whole list of what things happened to go in to. That, what, what happened in that time, Deb? What happened? Um, I don't know. What happened? Nothing happened. What happened? Oh, what oh, happened? Oh. Oh, it's oh, Bev's birthday. Oh, Bev's birthday oh, this week. This, uh, Seth, this last week. No, Bev. It's Bev. Seth. It's Bev's birthday. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh I think God. there's a card. Oh wow. Oh. I'm a mom, so this is these oh. are the cards that we have. Okay, here we go. Oh wait, hey, okay. I always get the life, life lessons, lessons from, from a dog. From a dog. It's amazing. I'm gonna read you your birthday card. Okay. I'm very lucky. Stay about curious. This. Oh no, don't, don't. Stay curious. Hmm. Say yes to treats. Mm. Life's short. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Naps are essential. Naps. They are. That's how I survive. Just, naps. Just be you're wonderful as you are. Happy birthday. Love the Bible. Oh, uh, you are so damn there sweet. We go. Oh, look at there that. There we go. Life lessons from go. a dog. So nice you of you. Got a little card. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to get welcome. it here, but it's very exciting. A little bit of childhood. Oh, it was a few days ago, by the way, my birthday. It's not actually my birthday today. It's past now. We don't have to do anymore. I thought we were going to do that for the full hour. We're just oh, going to do yeah, yeah. I've got oh, birthday so surprises. Already, I've got costume already, changes. Already. <laughs> you won't believe what's going to come up next. But oh, yeah. we should start talking about Joe Biden, I think. That's the place to begin if there's anything to, any place to start. It. How he's handling the vax mandate. I want to say, first of all, in this time that we've been off, and even since the last show, has been an incredibly newsworthy time. Like, yes. Lots of stuff yes. has happened in the last yeah. two weeks that's oh my god and afghanistan two, two months ago three months ago and it's only like yeah like and I'm, I'm including that also yeah. i don't know i've lost all all track of time but it feels the afghanistan thing he's trying to get the infrastructure bill passed and now he's basically had it up to here with the people that refuse to get vaccinated and he's throwing his weight around in the federal government to make sure that uh, give people tremendous incentive to get the damn shot which is something by the way that works people are like I'm not going to get the shot. You're imposing on my freedom. And then we say, you need to get the shot to go to the football game. And they're like, oh, where can I get the right. shot? Right. It becomes very that, limiting. That, if you that's don't how have committed it. they are. Yeah. <laughs> if you inconvenience them in the slightest <laughs> bit, yeah. you're going to get the damn shot. So here, the whole Biden thing also, he's been pummeled by the media so far, attacked and pummeled yeah. by the media. It, and I don't understand, and I don't watch this shit on TV really, but you get the clips from Twitter. And I don't know if they're trying to be all like, we, you know, we were hard on Trump, so we we're going to be hard on Biden, even though they were never hard on Trump ever for a fucking uh, second. This but, is what they, they do like, now. I mean, know, this is they have to not be the liberal media, but yeah. there is no liberal media. These guys are all, they're, what is it? Nope. Five corporations own the whole damn thing. Yep. I don't know That's what's right. in the Jake Clapper. I don't know if he, if, and if like Tucker two oligarchs own him. the five corporations. Exactly. <laughs> Look, just, there's not a lot of diversity in the media ownership in this country. Like, I guess they feel like they have to look like they're doing their job, so they start attacking whoever's in power. But I don't get it, it because it, it, there's it, a it, difference it, between Trump and Biden. I mean, Biden is, for one thing, acting in the American interest, where Trump was acting in Russia's interest, and that's a, like, that's a big, significant uh, difference. You can't just wash right past that, but the they The Republicans do. are trying to kill their children in the schools <laughs> right now. They're yes. literally doing things to kill yes. their own children. That's what right. they're doing. That's the level of evil that we've been slowly a frog in the boiling water, like that kind of thing. We're at the level yeah. where leaders of the Republican Party in states like Florida, in Texas, in Mississippi, in South Dakota are actively trying to kill their own kids by doing these. Well, we can't have anything in the school that mandates masks. That's where we are as a society right now mm -hmm. in this country. That's where we are. And Biden is basically saying, hey, maybe let's not kill the kids. Maybe instead of he's, killing he's the kids. He's actually, yeah, go ahead. Let's on do you. something that where we actually don't kill the kids and maybe save them. 
And the best thing he did, and what I wanted to say when we wrote down the little notes for this, I wasn't sure about Biden coming in because I thought he was too old. I wanted Kamala. I want a Gen X person. I want a woman in power. The last mm. thing I wanted was an old white guy in power, right? Right. Okay. But the benefit of having a guy like Biden in power who is as old as he is, he does not give a shit. He doesn't care about running for the next thing. He doesn't care about this or that donor. He doesn't fucking care. He's there and he's going to do what he thinks is right. And so far, yeah. what he thinks is right has been right. Yeah. And I sensible. love that. Today, in the press conference, was it today or yesterday when they came at him? And well, what are the governors in the states? What are you going to do when you get sued? And he just said, have at it. Right. It's, yeah. I like that. It's good that they're having these legal battles because like, it's important that the president's overseen by some sort of body that's independent of him. But these are such common sense ideas that he has. Of course, people should get vaccinated. It's not like that means we're approving of the virus. It's not like an endorsement on the virus. We just think everyone should get vaccinated because it's a way to keep going forward and not killing people. But I guess Republicans have a, a very different view of that. And I always wonder no, why. I, what is, oh, what this do they is have? where I'm going to go crazy. Yeah. This is what makes me nuts. This is a psyop. We need to stop it. Everybody just stop it. Stop it with Jig Tapper coming on. Like, Has he been too mean to the unvaccinated? Ah, shut the fuck <laughs> up. This is, <laughs> this is an that? attack. We are under attack. 600,000, probably 700,000, probably over a million Americans are dead. They're dead. They're gone forever. Children are getting sick and dying over this fucking performative nonsense. None of these motherfuckers believe anything that they're saying. None of these GOP believe anything that they're putting out there. It's performance art for votes and power grabs. That's it. They're all fucking vaccinated. Their kids are all vaccinated. They're not sending their kids into, this is what it is. The, the Texas thing with the abortion was the same thing. He knows that's going to get struck down. You can't enable a whole bunch of private citizens to be bounty fucking hunters and go and bring it in the court. They know that, but they get to do their little fucking Photoshop, making their little stupid ass meme performative artwork so that they can try to keep consolidating their base and they can topple democracy in the end because they just want to be a bunch of fucking oligarchs. That's all they fucking want. They just want to privatize everything and walk them away with a billion dollars of their own. They're tired of going on the yachts with the oligarchs and seeing the honey pots that those guys roll out and say, you know what, I want this for myself. That's all it is. It's I think cosplay. it might be even worse than that. I it's, think it might be. it's to topple democracy and it's to fucking kill us. Mm -hmm. They're killing us and I'm sick of it. Joe Biden pulled, as someone said on Twitter, he pulled the car over. Dad just pulled the car <laughs> over and screamed yeah. at the kids, right? And I did something like that too. It's like, this is a fucking enough. You're putting everybody at risk. It, it's for performance art. It's horseshit. And I'm sick of it. I don't want to hear any fucking, I'm off all that fucking cable shit. Fuck those fuckers for, set, for both sides in a pandemic as if we're all supposed to kowtow to the emotional feelings of a bunch of Facebook Fox News zombies that have just plugged their dicks in their empty hollow hearts and their racism into devices and into talking news heads uh, that are all fucking owned by the Kremlin or, or anyway. I'm sorry, this is my rant. I don't wanna hear it. There's no news in uh, both sides in a pandemic and let's think about the unvaccinated fuck the unvaccinated that, that wasn't what i was going to say but, yeah. i yeah. know you're not saying that yeah. i'm talking to that yeah. i have right. had enough joe can't talk like this i will channel i'll be the thing behind joe right like they did with obama with the obama's inner voice right this is the inner voice it's all bullshit. everybody needs to stop taking it seriously it's stupid, it's asinine, but it's also deadly. It's sociopathic mass murder. It's when are also, we gonna stop this? Just call it what it is. They're murderers. It's a genocide, for, for, I mean, it really is a genocide. It's a genocide, yeah. it's a genocide for a meme. Yeah, and for other purposes, I add off. There's an ethnic cleansing okay. thing going on here. There's a racial cleansing thing going on here. There oh, is yeah. there's a poverty much more. Cleansing thing yeah, going there's on. a lot going on here that is not just a meme. I think the reason that they're doing a lot of this is to reduce the number of non-white voters in their states. That's a real reason, or at least a real benefit in their mind of what's going on here. And I think that's you know, we haven't yet been able to prove that, but it certainly looks like the number of unvaccinated oh. people of all 
races yeah. happen to be higher in those states, no matter yeah. how you look at the numbers. And more people of, who are non-white are in hospitals and more people who are non-white are dying in hospital from COVID in those unvaccinated states. So in the red states, that's what's going on. That's the actual how the numbers flow out. It's not yeah. the rich MAGA crowd or people who voted for Donald Trump that are landing up in the hospital. Maybe some of them, yes. But for the most part, it's the same thing. It's people who have to go out of their homes to work. It's because they can't afford any other kind of work. Whether they live in cramped quarters or they're just doing more to, to survive. They need to survive because they're poorer. Or, and that's why right. those are the and people the other, that are landing up in the hospital. It's all just also about it's okay to use any American body, even their own voters, any American body to damage Joe Biden. This is the other part of it is that it's also all the sacrificial it's, we've walked through some warped portal where you know everyone's back to that hedonistic let's just let the heads roll down and sacrifice to the gods but the gods are themselves and their own thirst and bloodlust for power and all it's, they want to, everybody wants to get back to normal there is no back psychotic. to normal we're not getting back to normal. There's no, this pandemic will be followed by something else and something else after that and something yeah, else after right. that. Unless we turn this whole thing around. It's just a never ending a list of diseases and vaccines that they're gonna be able to put out year after year. They'll make tons of money and we will want to maintain our normalcy. So we'll keep leaning into this and leaning into it. And there is a danger in saying you know, everyone needs to be vaccinated because we want to get back to normal because really there's a problem with the fact this pandemic's going on in the first place and we need to confront the reasons behind the pandemic but we're in no position to do that yet i mean i don't think we're yet even in a in a powerful position to go and talk to the chinese about why they didn't they didn't share the information when they needed to at the beginning of of this pandemic about why we're actually in this position who's responsible for putting us in this position we're still not there yet nor have we the chinese gave the rna code to the americans in what a week and a half after yeah, it was released yeah. I mean, they get the code i don't know what more they're supposed to do like i, I, I they closed off everything we don't know anything about what happened in china during that first period of time and we don't even know if that's the code. We just have a genetic sequence they gave us. We never saw any of the samples. They destroyed or hid every of the other samples that they had in Wuhan. So there's a whole lot of questions around that early stage of infection, which we've forgotten about now because we're having such a crisis. And beyond that, you know, Russia, so I always go back to Russia, is laughing at this because this is exactly what they want. They want an America divided. They want an America yelling yeah. at each other about all these things. They want us to hate each other because one side's decided to be get vaccinated, the other side's not going to get vaccinated. This is their dream. And yes, news networks are pushing the same agenda and th they're watching America self-destruct in front of their eyes without having to do very much. All they had to do was to polarize us through these mass media campaigns. You know, it's depressing really but i don't know how we get out of it actually to be honest it's going to be a complicated road what he's doing is helping and i want to say one thing because yeah. i think it's it an is. important distinction vaccinate our way out of it yeah. yeah but yeah no but the distinction here is it while there is significant overlap between maga people and the unvaccinated it is by no means a direct overlap right there are plenty of wackadoodle right. lefties that, oh, that don't want to get vaccinated. Oh, I mean, I'm with them all. Yeah, uh, there's people that are just afraid, uh, that don't know any better. There's people that are lazy. That, so when the things that Biden is doing right now, by the way that law is written, as I understand it, the executive order is, hey, you don't have to require vaccinations, but if you don't, you have to test everybody every week and you have to pay for it. Yes. Your company. Which right, means right. that every company has a tremendous financial incentive to r require that everybody be vaccinated, yeah. which is what he wants. Because at this point, it's not early on. The damn thing is FDA approved. The numbers speak to themselves. This is a math problem. Your chances of getting COVID and dying of COVID are much greater than whatever you think is going to happen to you if you take the vaccine. Oh, yeah. That's just math. Okay, it's, I have a prediction. Statistics. Let's get out of this with a prediction and move on. Yeah. I, my prediction is that by the time we get to the holidays, unless there's a new variant that, that these insane addicts of disinformation have cooked up in their bodies, because mm. that's all they are. That's all they are. They're not thinking individuals. They're just cookers of the next variant. So and if that aside, I think we're actually going to be pretty much through this by the holidays, which will be amazing. I do. Yeah. I think people if are everybody gets, a lot more vaccinations yeah, yeah. and I think it's I think we're going to be in good shape by now we have said that before we said this almost a year yeah. ago and it's like amazing when you think about how how this thing is just dragged on it just keeps going on and going on and that's why I think Biden did lose his, his patience with everyone and said it's time to stop it really that's is time right. to stop it really is yes. he brings them to water he keeps bringing the horses to water and mm. then Jake Tapper's like 
Biden's horses aren't drinking the water. And it's like, yo, fuckhead. That's not his job. His job is to bring them to the water. If the horses can't drink it and don't want to drink it and think it, it's they're pinging on their freedom to drink the fucking water, that's on the horses. It's It was the same it's thing. It's also not family. news. It's not news. Yeah. It's no, it's not. not. The no, they don't do news. State, the emotional yeah. state of people who are drowning in disinformation is not a headline. It's no. not. It's not. Who fucking cares? They don't do that's the news the, anymore. The they news. do conflict. They, they do, do tension. The they do, let's ride that's everybody right. up. Let's have everybody fight against each other. That's what Jeff Zucker is in there to do. That's why he never seems to that's leave. Right. I mean, he was meant to have resigned like, and retired a while ago. Oh, still my God. How many heart attacks and things has this guy said he's, he's had to get himself out of there and none he, of it's happened? He's not leaving. He's yeah. there. He's staying he's in there. It's enough. So it's just, we've got to the point where it's just, it's, we're, we've got to stop these news machines from continuing this. Oh, oh, hello. That's my Siri. That's my Siri. That's what my Siri sounds like. Oh, oh we didn't hear it. It's okay. I wish he was just asking. She was, he was just asking oh. if I could see if I could say that again to him, but I don't need him right now. Oh, so you don't need you, to. I don't need Does Siri. he have a French accent? No, he, he has a bit of an Australian accent, what? actually, which is interesting. Oh, I don't, he I don't does. know. I didn't, I've never spoken to him before. He's actually new to me as well. So I just I accidentally pressed the button and there he was. So I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> Do you, what's your sorcery, your LB? Is it a man or a woman or they? I, or... Don't know, I just I just tell her to shut up. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm not interested in Siri and I don't want Siri talking to me. And I keep having to turn Siri off and have no interest. But um, Siri is like that paper clip that used to come off. Remember that? Like, Hi, I'm your assistant. Ah, in, the in Microsoft. Microsoft Word, you know, <laughs> get the, I couldn't click that thing to leave fast enough. Get the it's, fuck out of here. I know. It's like the, uh, the alarm that goes off in my fridge, which I can't stand because I always leave the door open somehow. And then I'm always like on the other side of the room and I'm about to sit down and then it goes off. It doesn't like it doesn't go off when I'm there. It just waits for me to go the other side. I hate it. Can't turn it off. Can't turn it off. But that's what the series likes to me. Boy, we digressed a little. But I thought maybe it was a good oh. thing. So <laughs> where do we go from here? I do think Biden has done a particularly effective few months. And I can't imagine why Americans would think otherwise. I just look at this man's uh, well, they don't. every week. If you, uh, if you look at the polling, they don't. Yeah. yeah I, mean, some of the, I think the, he got a bad rub of Afghanistan. I think they did a great job. And lo and behold, look, the Taliban are actually letting people out of the country on regular flights and all that fear mongering that these poor Americans are going to get trapped in there and, and never be released. And they'll be fighting their way to freedom. Well, that didn't happen. Actually, they're being out going through organized commercial flights day after day, just like Biden said that they would be doing. It's frankly he handled that quite well, I think. So that's a big win for him. I thought the storms were unbelievable. I forgot about the storms almost. Isn't that incredible? And I bet yeah. you there's still so many people that uh, are just still don't have power probably in, in parts of Louisiana. Uh, uh, yeah. And then the storms in the Northeast, and just unbelievable reminder of climate change in our world, which is here. And you've, you're experiencing it there as well. It'll be in California. In it's very bad here. I don't know. I love California so much. I do. Mm. This is my home. It's been my home for a very long time, longer than any other place I've lived. And it's just, it is forever changed. And I have this conversation with so many of my longtime friends who've been here for a long time. And, and it's a real threat. So I, I, it was interesting. I listened to, it was like on Twitter, someone captured a clip of Jay Johnson and I'm not advocating a position on him because I know that people get all weird about that. But he was saying, I think it was around a 9-11, like what's coming up. And he was saying the actual three greatest threats we face now and connected to this Afghanistan thing, Greg, is that really is international terror really our biggest threat anymore? And what is it now? And I believe it was him. And he said, oh, it's climate change. Here's a top five climate change. Wow. And then it was what Americans Twitter, say to that, by the way. Domestic terrorism. Yeah. Americans say violent crime, coronavirus, uh, and extreme weather. So extreme weather is there. It's number three. Uh, so, but they still think so, uh, violent crime is the biggest one. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, well, what, that's the panda, what is the panda, Greg? Oh. oh, the panda. Yeah. The panda's. <laughs> The pandas from my, uh, the bear story I was doing, I, just did, I was enjoying uh, the graphics, so I was using them. But I'll get to the bears a little later, because that is a good story to talk about. Oh. We've got, we got other things to talk about. This is the bear in, uh, in, in Pennsylvania, the Russian spy that was doing all this insurrection meetings and holding uh, uh, the Nazi uh, launch party at his barn. Yeah. And, uh, and organizing all these stop the steel rallies in his in Pennsylvania because that's what you do when you're uh, just dropping into to Pennsylvania for after living in Russia for you know, 20 years. He arrives there in 2018, buys three properties, launches his American version yeah. of his Russian websites called Russia Insider and a bunch of other things, and uh, starts I think funneling money from Russia into these uh, publications and then 
gone to him. And <laughs> one would think, <laughs> one would think that's how it worked. And then on top of that, he's got this like giant barn, which is like, perfect, like concealed from the street. You can't see it from anywhere. There's, you know, yeah. it's where you could hold the, the launch meeting for the National Justice Party, which is the Nazi Party of America, because yeah. that's what you can do. And you can rile up white nationalists. His partner in crime is out on the West Coast, getting the movie guide mailing list and mining the yeah. mailing list for all the Christian right names you could find off that list so that they could mine for all these people who can come and join the, the National <laughs> Justice Party. He, then he hooks up with Sean Moon of the Moonies, as one does, yeah. but they start uh, you know, calling for the free and fair elections of uh, Pennsylvania and, and uh, that there was a recount and they need to, that the election was stolen. And it's just so obvious what was going on. If you look at it, I guess in hindsight, it was obvious, but I guess if you were there at the time, it was also obvious. And this guy just did this. And then on, he has a week before the insurrection, he has Sean Moon and his friends staying over at the barn. And on that same day, all of the insurrection leaders had a meeting in the same town, not in the same barn, but in the same town to discuss their plans. So now you've got a Russian spy, supposed Russian spy, let's say, because we can't say for sure, but it sure looks like one, in all the meetings for planning the insurrection and organizing the, the, the rallies and bringing people in and, and encouraging them to do this. It's a Russian, it's a Russian op, as many of us would have suspected, but it sure looks like a Russian op now, which if, you know, if you're Kevin McCarthy and you're worried about why you might be compromised, I think that would be one of the reasons they might be a bit challenged here because now it looks, looks a little treasony. It doesn't even look just like an insurrection by Americans. It looks like well, an insurrection by domestic. Americans with Russians. It's it's very domestic, and the organizers are uh, extreme opportunists. I think is a, is this the best for me? This is the best way to talk about it now until more comes out. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but there clearly was a plan. Yeah, and there are organizers with the plan. There was a timeline. Things went off according to the timeline. Sandy uh, Bacon, by the way, had the best. Uh, she's been harping and harping yes. is the wrong word, but just hammering this right, hammering this the sequence of events of. This was a planned event. They had it planned down to the hour. Something happened and threw things off a little bit. And that is why maybe some things didn't succeed in terms of being able to take the Capitol. I have been saying for quite a while, I think this was a hostage taking plan. I think that if there is a plan in place to take hostages as part of a larger coordinated event, that um, there's always going to be somebody on the inside that's like a negotiator going to come out and say, I'm speaking for the blah, blah, blah. I want to know who that person, I, I'm interested in this stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. guys. I'm not trying to be conspiratorial. I'm just interested in, this was a highly organized planned event. It was, you can't, there's no way to look Expensive at what was out there in the public. And they yeah. were telling us, we're planning this. Yeah. Hey, we're planning this. Oh, hey. And you can look at the, their communication channels. They're like, yep, we're going to do that. He's going to call the National Guard. Then they're going to be able to suspend it. All these buffoons that everyone's focusing on, even they had the plan. <laughs> they met They met the so, Russian coordinator the week uh, before just to make sure yeah, they had it all right. Yeah, there was some stuff going you, on there. So you know we, we're he, waiting to hear. Yeah. And we, I hope we hear. I hope we hear from, I hope we're not just seeing all of the day play actors, right? Oh, that uh, getting uh, that, you know, got enrolled in that getting trotted before court and getting slapped with the trespassing and going home. And that's all. If those are the only people who land up going to jail for this and uh, serving time for this. This is a waste oh. of time. It's a waste of time to have uh, Merrick Garland in that office. I don't care. It's just, I don't know why. I'm going to give him time. He wants time. Let's see what happens. We have a good idea of what happened that day. We've all been investigating this in different ways yeah. with all the, with the huge crowd of people that are doing this. We just know what happened. They have the same idea. Yeah. It's probably the same picture. They're not arresting the people that you'd think you'd arrest if you had the same picture. I mean, by now, yeah. it's stunning that people like Roger Stone or Alex Jones or Michael Flynn are still out there unless they're, I don't know, unless they're just not allowed to be arrested. That's Is the only Mike Flynn's brother still at the Pentagon? Is, he, is it the command of the... To yeah, Pacific, the, to Hawaii, didn't he? the Pacific uh, fleet. He was in charge of the Pacific fleet, which is great because okay. that's what you want <laughs> someone like Charles Flynn to be. Or not Charles yeah. Flynn, the other, the other Flynn. You'll appreciate the name that the, this uh, guy from uh, Pennsylvania. He's basically tied into the Malofiev uh, world of, oh. of oligarchs, meaning the Russian Orthodox Church and the and that yes. whole crowd. So he's on the extreme of oligarchs as far as oligarchs. I, I had I didn't have that I didn't have that little piece of data. Yeah, so it's interesting. Constantine Malofiev, the, okay. yeah, who's, yes, who's a piece I'm of work. A, and you, know, you can't get a picture of Malofiev and Putin together, which is amazing. Because normally these oligarch 
you know, love to get their picture with Putin. But these two, no photos out there. I wonder what's going on in your mind. <laughs> you're thinking something, but you're not going to tell us. Are you going to tell us? <laughs> no. Oh, well, tell me afterwards. I want to know what you mean. What's all that going? That's interesting. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. Next topic. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. What is the next topic? I don't have any more. Um, well, let's, let's, stay, let's stay on the insurrection yeah. for a minute yeah, because yeah. Th this is okay. also, I feel, and this just occurred to me now as we're talking, one of the things that is a problem with the way that the mainstream media presents this stuff, no matter what it happens to be, is the just the constant gaslighting and the under the guise of both sidesing things. As with the vaccines, we know what's going on with the vaccines. Everybody's supposed to get them. The sooner everybody gets them, the sooner this ends and people are, are not getting them. And that's the fucking problem. But the, the way the media has it presented, the newspapers want to write about all these, oh, these vaccine hesitant people and blah, blah, blah. We need to understand the psychology. We can't be mean to them because that won't make them get the vaccine. All this kind of weird, like non-news shit. And it, mm. it just makes you think, Am I crazy that, I, that this is easier than I think? And with the insurrection, it's the same thing. Sandy was there that day. She had videos. She's been saying since literally that day, yeah. hey, there were yeah. guys with bullhorns telling yes. everybody what to do. They had fucking- The same bullhorns. It was like the tiki torches. Where did you guys go yeah. and get all those? Someone bought some shit in bulk yeah. and handed it out. Yeah, from China and all sorts of things. They, they were very yeah. specifically chosen. Go ahead, Greg. Well, we it's know, important to look at know, things that way. I don't know what the ultimate plan is, but I think, okay, Look at the thing that happened in, in uh, and look at what they were yeah. planning to do with the governor of Michigan. They were going to kidnap her and do all this stuff. Right. Was that kind of a, a trial run or a, hey, let's open this play off Broadway before we bring it here to the Great White Way and the Times critic is there or whatever? I don't know, but I feel like, Zev, to your point, it's, nobody's talking about this stuff. It's, okay, it's I'm really happy that the QAnon shaman... Who might as well, by the way, QAnon Shaman, I know you can't hear me because you're in jail. You might as well change your fucking name to QAnon Shaman because that's how everyone is going to call you for the rest of your fucking life, you fucking asshole. QAnon so Shaman. I don't even want to know whatever your real name is. It doesn't exist anymore. It's, uh, it's a dead name now. Oh my you're gosh. the QAnon Shaman forever. That's your fucking punishment, asshole. So anyway, true. as glad as I am that he's in prison and stuff like that, why are we focusing on these people? And I've said this before on the show, and you said it just now. Why Roger Stone, Mike Flynn, these Bannon, these guys Jones. are fucking dangerous. Yeah. They should not be out. Yeah. And we already fucking convicted them of something. I put this on Twitter and just contest the pardons of these guys mm. that oh, they've already been convicted. Right? And twi legal Twitter is like, a pardon. Power is fuck off power. legal twitter yeah you know, but fuck is it off. is it really is it these if people Trump are not, is like they, they, you know, he's a russian asset he's a russian asset he doesn't what he did never, doesn't count we are in uncharted territory if i was in charge i would these be like his conspirators yeah yeah get right. stone here he's gonna go to prison right the fuck now go get him detain him and send him on his sentence and if he wants to appeal it from prison fucking let him it can wend its way through the courts and let that sleazy fuckhead worry about that yeah. and plan his own defense instead of planning to topple the government. I think it also do work, that. Then do it. If it doesn't work yeah. and in six months he's free, fine. That's six months of time that he was right. off doing something else. Uh, I want to be clear that you're not advocating political persecution. What Greg is talking about is there's crimes here. Lots of <laughs> yeah. crimes. There's crimes in front here. of our eyes. Lots and lots of crimes. Mm. And he's a co-conspirator of the guy who pardoned him. And there is a way to challenge pardons based on that. And it's, it, it, so I've luckily to quit Twitter, but the, we're getting, we got this information from former prosecutors who are on the side of challenge right. the corrupt pardons. It's not challenging all the pardons. It's challenging the corrupt the part. Corrupt. Mm -hmm. so, the and also, by the way, legal Twitter, while we're at it, we know why it won't work. We know that yeah. argument. Yeah. Give us the argument for why it will. That's your sort of... fucking job. If you can't contribute that, yeah. then shut the go. fuck up. Okay? Can you, can you I don't write need, our own I don't laws? A, I don't need legal Twitter to be like, Greg, it can't because of the blah, blah. I need you to tell me how it can, can work. That, yes. Isn't that how these mafia guys, yeah. the mafia guys, they'll say, yes, well, can't, it they is. Guys, <laughs> <law."> and the <laughs> oligarch says, fuck that figure out how we can do it. And then their That's high right. priced lawyers figure it the fuck out. That's what we need legal Twitter to do. That's, That's how we got the abortion we, law in Texas. That's how they basically figured a way around the system. They did it. We can figure out a way around the system too.